Antonio starts right now. The New York Times article just encapsulates uh, every bit of failure, but more importantly, the lies and misinformation that have. and his agency. Making news this morning, more reaction to a report by the New York Times that highlights new problems during the shooting at Robb Elementary. Why a senator is calling for the resignation of the director of the Department of Public Safety. The January 6th committee meets for what will likely be its final public hearing today. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien in Washington. What to expect coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, 72 degrees. However, stepping out this morning, it felt a little less humid. We'll take anything we can get at this point. Hey, good morning. It is third. Thank you. You love to be here. Girl show for the next couple of days. <laughs> Mark right. is off on vacation and just happy to be with you, Steph. Yes, happy to have you here. And we also have Justin. We know you're not part of the girl show, but I mean, I mean, but you're, you're welcome. You're a girl dad. You That's love the right. girl household. You're like, I'm going to fit right in. That's true. <laughs> and I'm uh, glad you guys are here this morning. Uh, you mentioned the lower humidity. We're starting to feel some of that frontal boundary coming through and we can see where the front is based on our dew points because this is not going to be a big cool down for us today, but it will dry us out. Dew points are in the 50s behind the front ahead of its 60s and 70s. So very humid air versus some pretty dry air and I think these dew points come down even a little bit more as we head into the afternoon. So it'll feel a little bit better today in terms of humidity, not so much temperature. Let's look at the live radar real quick too because we do have a couple of showers and storms with this front, but they're well to our east out towards the Houston area and I don't anticipate seeing any rain with the front as it moves through San Antonio. So it's a dry forecast today. Temperature wise, 71 at the airport, so still fairly warm. You do notice, though, that we have some 50s and 60s behind the front. So 58 Kerrville, 63 Fredericksburg, that drier air allowing temperatures to fall a little bit more this morning. And as we look around Bear County, 70s for the most part, so it is uh, still somewhat of a, a warm morning. Here's a case at 12 hour forecast. Uh, by 9 a.m., 73, mostly sunny, noontime, 86, mostly sunny. In the afternoon, we're still up around 92. Uh, still a warm day. Northeasterly winds could be gusty from time to time, too. We do want to pass that along. There's a fire danger with those lower dew points. We'll talk more about that. Plus, that big front on Monday. It's looking better and better, guys. We've got good news here. Uh, that's coming up here in just a few minutes. Justin, thank you. This morning, District 9 Senator Roland Gutierrez is reacting to a New York Times visual investigation that claims there are three major problems in the Department of Public Safety's Robb Elementary investigation. So the New York Times is highlighting the discrepancies during the initial active shooter response. That's when agents declared the shooter as a barricaded subject and the moments before the shooter was killed. So now State Senator Roland Gutierrez is calling for the Department of Public Safety Director Steve McCraw's resignation. You know, Steve McCraw has given us different scenarios, both to the Texas Senate and the Rob Committee report and to the press. All of that misinformation has been intentional. I don't know why, but it has been intentional. So we've contacted the governor and the Department of Public Safety, and so far we have not heard back yet. And new video out of New Braunfels Sky 12 was over the scene of a mulch fire that we've been watching since earlier this week. It started a business on the 300 block of Psalms Road. Firefighters say the fire is contained, but crews are monitoring for hot spots. The Psalms Road area is open again. However, fire officials are asking drivers in that area to be careful. The House Select Committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol is preparing for what will likely be their final public hearing this afternoon. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, the panel of lawmakers is promising to show new evidence and new video. The House Select Committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol, now preparing for what will likely be its final public hearing today. Committee members promising substantial new video and significant witness testimony using evidence gathered over the last few weeks to fill in previously unknown details. We're interested in telling the big story, which is deliberate hit against the vice president and the Congress to overthrow the 2020 presidential election. 
No live witnesses are planned, but since the committee's last hearing in July, several members of former President Donald Trump's cabinet have sat for taped interviews, along with Ginny Thomas, the conservative activist and wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. She told the committee she still believes the election was stolen, but said she had nothing to do with the violence on January 6th. In its previous hearings, the committee making the case the Capitol attack was a direct result of Trump's false claims the election was stolen and showing evidence of attempts to overturn the vote count in several states. He's become detached from reality if he really believes this stuff. Most recently showing video of Trump the day after the riot, revealing outtakes from a speech he recorded where he resisted saying the election was over. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? Trump has called the committee's investigation rigged. Meanwhile, the Justice Department is conducting its own separate criminal investigation into January 6th. So far, more than 800 people have been arrested for a variety of crimes, including assaulting Capitol Police officers around half. Venezuelan migrants seeking to come to the U.S. It's similar to the approach the administration took toward Ukrainians earlier this year. They must apply, have a sponsor in the U.S., and undergo screening and vetting. There are also vaccination requirements. According to DHS, up to 24,000 Venezuelans will be accepted. Those who cross the border unlawfully will be returned to Mexico. DHS says in August, more than 55,000 migrants encountered at the border were from Venezuela, Cuba, Cuba or Nicaragua. That's a 175 percent increase from last August. Jurors have ordered Alex Jones to pay nearly $1 billion to Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting victims, relatives, and an FBI agent. The verdict is the second big judgment against the InfoWars host for spreading the myth that the deadliest school shooting in U.S. history never happened. He had also said that the grieving families seen in news coverage were actors hired as part of a plot to take away people's guns. Now, back in August, a jury here in Texas awarded nearly $50 million to the parents of another slain child. North Korea says leader Kim Jong-un has supervised tests of long-range cruise missiles, which he described as a successful demonstration of his military's expanding nuclear strike capabilities. So the test on Wednesday extended a record number of weapons demonstrations this year by North Korea. South Korean officials say Kim Jong-un may also conduct a nuclear test in the next coming weeks or months. It's part of an escalating pressure campaign aimed at forcing the United States to accept the idea of the North as a nuclear power. And time now is 437 and 72 degrees for now. Go Spurs, go! The San Antonio Spurs will try to get another win tonight when they face the Oklahoma City Thunder. We'll have a preview plus why AT&T has decided to keep their name on the home of the Spurs for just a little longer. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking out there at Highway 281 at Bassey where things are moving, but, you know, kind of quiet this morning. It's 438. Taking a look outside with live cam, 72 degrees at 438. This is talking about the humidity. He'll let us know what we can expect when we come back. Well, now that... Now that Spurs have gotten their first win under their belt with the victory over the Jazz in Utah. It's about building on that success. So the Spurs only have one more preseason game. the regular season. So next Wednesday, in the meantime, head coach Greg Popovich is asking players like Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell to be leaders on the team as young veterans on and off the court. Me and Devin, uh, you know, we, we sat down, we, we sat down and talked and, you know, um, you know, just, just, just knowing that, you know, this is, you know, our time. I feel like, you know, uh, we put in a position, we're blessed enough to be put in a position to, you know, be young leaders on the team. But we still have, we still have Gorgie, we still have Doug, you know, we still have older guys in us. But, you know, for those guys to, you know, kind of, kind of say, okay, we're going we're gonna to let you guys lead and if they need to step in, they step in. 
Well, tonight's matchup of Spurs versus the Thunder tips off tonight at 7 p.m. at the AT&T Center. And speaking of AT&T, it has agreed to extend its naming rights to the Spurs Arena owned by Bear County through the coming 2022-2023 season to give the Silver and Black more time to find a new partner for the naming rights. The original deal was set to expire this month. And with AT&T already the sponsor for the Cowboys Stadium in Dallas, we were not expecting AT&T to renew their 20-year agreement with the Spurs for $41 million. The Judson Rockets football team will have to forfeit their 44 to nothing victory over East Central last Friday for using an eligible player that has been confirmed by the chief of communications officer at Judson Independent School District in a statement. JISD says it was the Rockets coaching staff that reported the infraction to the University of Interscholastic League. That student was ineligible. And when the UTSA Roadrunners face Florida International on the road tomorrow night, they will be 33 and a half point favorites. The last time the Roadrunners were that heavy of a favorite was their game this season against Texas Southern, where they were the 44 point favorites. But it's tough for the team to stay focused when they are the favorites. Not at all. You know, we have the same mentality every week, so you know we just have to make sure that you know we just keep it level-headed, fly low. You know, because anything can happen. It doesn't matter what's happened before. It doesn't matter how you know what they went through, or what we went through. You know, we just have to keep a level head and just keep going forward. All right, kickoff Friday night set for 7 p.m. Go Roadrunners. That's right. We wish them the best of luck. They got off to a shaky start in the beginning of the season, but they're looking good now. Time now 4:44 and 72 degrees for now. And a first look at what's next for a fake heiress whose lavish lifestyle inspired the Emmy-nominated Netflix series Inventing Anna. And welcome back. It's 446. The so-called fake heiress is speaking out after being released from ICE detention. ABC's Rihanna and Ali has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Anna Delvey Sorokin speaking out. I feel like I've just been through so much and it would be impossible for me to uh, have been through what I've been through without changing. She's the fake heiress whose lavish lifestyle inspired the Emmy nominated Netflix series Inventing Anna. What's you wearing? You look poor. The real Anna now living in a one bedroom apartment in Manhattan under house arrest while she awaits the next steps in her immigration case. And this morning she's opening up to Good Morning America about the next chapter of her life. I am planning on using my voice and the platform that attention I'm getting now, which obviously stand for like my crimes um, for something positive. And hopefully people will afford me a second chance. We'll have much more of our interview with Anna Delvey Sorokin coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Annali, ABC News, New York. And another quick look at the roads with TransGuy looking out there. Highway 281 at Bassey. There are vehicles on the roadway, but they are moving slowly. Actually, not a lot of people on the roadways right now, but things will probably pick up later in the morning. All right, Justin, I walked out this morning and mm -hmm. it felt like kind of like a summer morning. It did yesterday and today for sure, uh, but here's the good news. We're, we're going to see the humidity that is uh, making you feel so warm out there. It's going to move out. We've got a frontal battery coming through, and this is not the kind of front that's going to make for a big cool down. It's just not, but it is going to dry us out. We're noticing the dew points are falling as we speak. Dew points are now in the 50s as you get into northwestern Bear County, 53 comfort. So that is the drier area that is working in. Out ahead of the front, you got dew points in the 60s and 70s. So that's going to be the big change today. Temperatures really don't change. It's the humidity. We're also going to watch the wind. As that front comes through, gusty winds pick up. We can see gusts close to 30 by 9 a.m. this morning. So winds will pick up here shortly and they'll be out of the northeast and uh, it'll be fairly gusty, at least through the morning hours. And then by the time we get into the afternoon, still breezy, but not necessarily windy. Strongest winds will be San Antonio and points east. So for that reason, with the drier air and the gusty winds, there is a fire threat as we head into the afternoon hours. So this orange color you see here. That is a very high fire threat, grass fire threat. So it's going to be up and down the I-35 corridor, San Antonio up to Austin. That's an area we'll watch. All of South Texas is really under a fire threat at this point with 
the dry conditions, but it is especially this area because of the gusty winds that we're going to watch closely today. Uh, as we go outside for you, we've got some cloud cover, 71 degrees at the airport, 74 Stinson, uh, not reporting at Kelly and Randolph at this hour and light winds uh, at those reporting sites. 68 degrees Hondo, 64 Rock Springs there in the drier air there, and then out ahead of the front, still got 70, 73 Pleasanton, 73 in starting to shift in your case at 12 hour forecast. Mostly sunny skies today by lunchtime. We're at 86 degrees and we're still up around 92 degrees today. Despite that front with uh, mostly sunny skies and again those breezy northeasterly winds. We did have a couple of showers associated with the front, but they're well off to the east around the Houston area. So we're not going to worry about rain, at least around San Antonio. Now, as we get into the afternoon and this front gets a little bit closer to the coast to some more year there could be some showers and storms but that all stays well southeast of town tomorrow uh, we'll see partly cloudy skies and maybe a couple showers along the coast again nothing here in town but things do change as we head into sunday and monday uh, here comes our next front and by sunday at five o'clock We've got showers and storms developing across North Texas. Some of those trying to seep down into our area late on Sunday. It is Monday where rain is a good bet. We're going to get cooler temperatures, gusty winds. It's going to feel like fall by the time we get into Monday afternoon. Rain moves out of here by Tuesday morning. How much rain could we see? Well, we're thinking one to two inches possible with this front. This would be Sunday through early Tuesday morning. Not everyone is going to get those big amounts, but on average, uh, there certainly could be some places that pick up some decent rain, and it has been a long time since we've seen widespread rain in the forecast like that. So let me show you the seven day forecast. 92 degrees today, 90 Friday, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday, 40% chance of rain late on Sunday, and then a 60% chance of showers and storms Monday. Temperatures start off in the 70s. I think we end up in the 60s by Monday afternoon. And Tuesday, clearing skies, 73 Wednesday morning. Right now we have 52. Could we see some 40s? <gasps> what? Wednesday morning. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Finally. Oh my gosh. Finally. Fall woke up. Yes. Well, it's waking up hopefully next week. Yes. And it's like, I'm going to actually be somebody. We're going to, yeah, <laughs> we're going to do something. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we have because of what he did. Oh, Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. All right, pick three. <laughs> five, nine, five, fireball, two. Daily four, four, zero, eight, four, fireball, zero. Cash five, six, nine, 11, 25, 31. A lot of Texas, 7, 13, 16, 19, 44, 53. And your one. Forty-two, fifty-nine. Powerball six, power play five. Good luck. Halloween is finally ending, plus a Sons of Anarchy star gets a new gig. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I was certain that I saw him watching me. In just a few hours, Halloween fans will get to say goodbye. Halloween Ends is billed as the final Halloween movie starring Jamie Lee Curtis and the character of Michael Myers, a franchise that started almost 45 years ago. Tears clinging to each other. At the film's Hollywood premiere this week, Curtis talked about how it feels to wrap up the thing that made her a star. Opening wide tomorrow. <sighs> Sons of Anarchy star Charlie Hunnam is setting out on a new adventure, this time around in India in the 1980s. He stars in the new series Shantaram. And what was Then Bombay, now Mumbai. But he tells me, unfortunately, they weren't able to film in India. A lot of, a lot of people have not been to that part of the world, so it was essential that we got India right. And because of the challenges we were facing because of COVID, it became impossible for us to shoot there. So Bangkok stands in for Bombay. Shantaram debuts Friday on Apple TV+. Kanye West was allegedly so unhinged during an interview this week for the HBO series The Shop that the episode won't air. That according to one of the show hosts, Maverick Carter, who tells Anscape, West used the interview to spew more hate speech, which included more anti-Semitic comments on the heels of similar comments that recently got the rapper suspended from Twitter and Instagram. And happy birthday, Borat. Actor Sasha Baron Cohen is 51 today, while Martin star Tisha Campbell is 54. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News.
Los Angeles. All right, 457 and 71 degrees. The U.S. State Department confirms another American citizen has been killed fighting for Ukraine. We will update you on how many Americans have been killed there since the Russian invasion began. And a fire at San Antonio police officer is out on bond and charged with the shooting of a 17-year-old in McDonald's parking lot, while a local law professor says he's not facing an attempted murder charge for right now. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuy looking over at Highway 281 at Bassey. No problems there this morning, but we will be checking with our RJ Marquez after the break. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The video was, was horrific. Uh, there's no question in anybody's mind looking at that video that the shooting is, is not justified. This morning, more questions about charges for a former San Antonio police officer who shot a teenager. Why a local law professor says that former officer isn't being charged with attempted murder. And more than half a dozen Americans are believed to have been killed since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began. We hear from the family of a U.S. military veteran who had been fighting alongside Ukrainians. Take a look outside with live cam, 71 degrees. We're starting off with the muggy morning, but Justin says that's not gonna be the story for the rest of the day. He'll let us know when those changes will happen in just a bit. But first, good morning. It's Thursday, October 13th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, we hope you've had a good week so far. And don't worry about these warmer temperatures because Justin has some good news. I hope I don't ruin that for you, Justin. No, no, no. This is the this is the talk of the town right now. We've got some cooler temperatures on the way early next week. That's what we're all excited about. Some rain chances too. We have a front also this morning, but this one isn't doing a whole lot for us other than drawing in some dry air and bring us some gusty winds today. If you're heading out to the bus stop right now, 68 degrees this morning. That drier air is starting to funnel in, but it's going to take some time. And then by the afternoon, yeah, lower humidity, but temperatures are still hot. 92 after school today, so still a hot one even here in uh, mid-October. Weather headlines. Drifting through with this front and uh, drier, windy, but still hot today. So that poses a fire threat. There is a fire. Choosing it. 90s humidity starts to return on Saturday and Sunday, so you'll feel it. And then we get that real front on Monday, rainy and cooler and windy. I think we could see some tumbling temperatures on Monday. Temperatures maybe in the 60s, uh, 70s uh, for highs. So this is this is going to be a good thing. 70 right now. Dew point is at 57 and falling. Northwesterly winds at six miles per hour. And there is that front that we've been talking about. Dew points are now starting to fall into the 50s, but out ahead of the front, you still have dew points in the 60s and 70s, so still muggy for our southeastern counties. That changes here within the next couple of hours. 69 degrees by 7 a.m., but we're up around 86 by noontime, and we top out close to 92 later this afternoon with those breezy northeast chilly winds. All right, let's check in on your morning commute. RJ, how are things looking out there? Yeah, things looking pretty good so far, Justin, and appreciate hanging out with the GMSA crew this morning, stepping in for Stephen Cavazos. And uh, we start here with our TransGuide traffic cameras, taking a look here at Loop 410. Looking things again, things looking pretty good. I-10 at Frio, not too bad out there. We want to take a wider view here at, at our map, and you see that uh, there's a lot of green on the screen, so that is good so far. But we have been following this crash up on the far north side, uh, past 1604 and Loop 281 and uh, Highway 281 there. So let's. Let's get a little bit closer look. Again, this was reported as a crash earlier this morning, a rollover crash, and unfortunately there was a woman that was thrown from her vehicle. We've been told that she is at the hospital in stable condition, and uh, we heard from our crews out there earlier that uh, things have cleared out as far as this crash is concerned here on the northbound lanes of US 281 near Stone or Parkway, but we will continue to follow it. You can see a little bit of backup there um, starting to build a little bit on the northbound lanes as crews continue to clear out that scene from earlier this this morning. All right, one other look at our TransGuide traffic cameras. Again, 281 at Grayson. Things looking pretty solid so far. We do expect the traffic to pick up throughout the morning, and we will continue to follow the very latest. Steph and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. This morning, fired San Antonio police officer James Brennan is out on bond after he was charged with shooting a 17-year-old in a McDonald's parking lot. Brennan faces two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. So now some are asking why not an attempted murder charge? A law professor with St. Mary's University says he thinks it's because of two main reasons. First, because the punishment is higher. 
with aggravated assault by a public servant. It's upgraded to a first degree felony, which is punishable by five to 99 year or life. Reason two, that it's easier to convict because they don't have to prove Brennan had intent to kill. But the government's going to have to prove that the defendant acted intentionally, knowingly or recklessly. So they can prove that his preliminary. So charges could be added or changed, but that will be up to the district attorney. The DA's office still hasn't received the case because it is still an open investigation. The police chief doesn't have a timeline for when it will be finished. In just a few weeks, voters will decide who will take the lead for Bear County. And after more than 20. step down and he says he is open to helping his success I believe when you serve in office and you leave office you just get out of the way and don't be a hindrance to whoever takes their takes your place uh, if they call for advice I'll certainly respond to it but I'm not going to be there trying to second guess them I think we're going to be in good hands and that was an interview ahead of his final State of the County address, which he delivered to the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. During his message, he pointed out five things he hopes Bear County will continue to work on. So that includes a focus on higher education, public and mental health, a diverse ecosystem, more projects that blend nature with urban life like the San Pedro Creek Project, and more sports and recreational opportunities. There has been talk about a new baseball stadium, but right now it's unclear whether San Antonio will get a new facility or just renovate the current one. Two candidates are competing to fill the county judge seat. That is Trish DeBerry and Peter Sakai. They will go head to head in the November election. Early voting begins on October 24th and election day is on November 8th. So there are also several other races on the ballot to consider. You can check it all out right now on our website at kset.com. Well, this morning we're learning more about two Americans and their fight for survival after being captured by the Russians while fighting in Ukraine. ABC's Derek Dennis has their story and the newest information on another American volunteer fighter who was killed on the front lines. This morning, the U.S. State Department confirms another American citizen has been killed fighting in Ukraine. Dane Partridge of Idaho reportedly died in the eastern Donbass region. He had a spiritual conviction that he couldn't deny and so he followed it and he went valiantly. Dane's sister says the U.S. military veteran had been fighting alongside Ukrainians since April. The only thing that he communicated was that the fighting conditions was more than what he had seen in Iraq. More than a half dozen Americans are believed to have been killed since the Russian invasion began, despite being warned by the U.S. government not to go. ABC's Whit Johnson spoke to two U.S. volunteers who fought with the Ukrainian military. They were captured by the Russians and spent 104 days in captivity. It's not just physical torture. There, there was a lot of uh, mental torture. I mean, we were, uh, we were sleep deprived. We were purposefully dehydrated. Um, it, we were put in a lot of stress positions that honestly some of those are, are worse than than the punches. We prayed for death. We just wanted to die. We, we just wanted it to end. Meanwhile, more dramatic rescues after days of relentless Russian missile attacks across Ukraine. One family pulled from under the rubble of their home in the southern city of Zaporizhia. This young girl squeezing through a small opening from the basement, followed by her mom and dad. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said yesterday he believes Ukraine's counteroffensive will continue through the winter. Vladimir Putin is meeting today with Turkey's president. The Turkish leader could suggest some potential ideas for peace, but expectations are low. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. It's 508 and 71 degrees. A win for former President Donald Trump, how his social media app is getting the green light. And do you like pets and would you like to get paid to work with them? How a new city program is helping people make the career switch. And a quick look out there with a live cam. We're starting your day at 71 degrees, a little humidity in the air, but not the cool, crisp morning that many people are hoping for right now. Maybe we'll get a shot at it next week. We'll be right back. A new opportunity to switch careers in as little as six months. One fashion design student is now looking to become an animal care officer. San Antonio has the only training academy in the country to offset the worker shortage. ACS has also introduced an animal apprenticeship program. So 20 years.
is training academy cadet and she is undergoing a 12-week course to learn the ins and outs of handling animals. It allows people with no experience to get hired on as an apprentice, do six months learning the animal handling and things like that, then promoting to cadet. It's something I learned so much about animals. Corporal Jason McAllister started working for AC in 72 degrees. Microsoft unveils three new Surface computers. We're going to show you which ones will soon be available at a store near you. We'll tell you which popular Apple apps that are coming to Windows very soon. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time, and get moving. Go cardio crazy in our clean and spacious clubs. Jam out on the strength machines and get down with some dumbbells. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends Friday, October 14th. Does your vitamin C last 24 hours? Only Nature's Bounty does. With Immune 24 Hour Plus, you get longer lasting vitamin C, plus herbal and other immune superstars. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Is dad posting a farewell to his favorite college freshman? Nope. He's switching his choice cashback category to gas. The road to college can be emotional, but also rewarding. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. Microsoft has unveiled three new Surface computers. ABC's Rhiannon and Ali has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Microsoft has unveiled three new Surface devices. The Surface Pro 9, a cross between a laptop and a tablet, has 19 hours of battery life. The Surface Laptop 5 has a 4K monitor and a desktop. The Surface Studio 2 Plus, it can show four different app windows at once. It starts at $4,300. Former President Trump's social media app, Truth Social, is now available from the Google Play Store. The app had been kept off the popular search engine because it violated several of Google's standard policies. But Google now says Truth Social has improved its monitoring of content. Finally, some big announcements. will be available on Windows PCs next year. Also, Microsoft is bringing support for iCloud phones. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. All right, it's 517, 72 degrees. Things look okay there at Highway 281, and I'm looking at Loop 410, some flashing lights. Let's go ahead and check in with RJ Marquez. Yeah, Stephanie, things not looking too bad right now on our roads as we take a look at our TransGuide traffic cameras, I-10 at Hackberry. Things looking pretty smooth so far as people get out and about, maybe heading out to school here in a little bit or to work as well. But uh, taking a look here at our bigger map, and you can see that the accident that we had earlier up in the Stone Oak area has appeared to be cleared out so we're showing no crash there. Now there was a little bit of a stall here south of downtown, but I zoomed in a little bit earlier and it does not look like it's causing any major issues. This is something that we will continue to follow throughout the morning. But I did want to bring your attention to some drilling work we have taking place later tonight. This is on the northeast side, Loop 410, Northeast San Antonio. The right shoulder will be closed from the westbound frontage lanes of Loop 410 from Randolph Boulevard to I-35 southbound, the frontage road there. So just kind of keep that in mind if you plan to be out and about tonight or in the overnight hours. But one more look at TransGuide here, and as we just talked about, things looking pretty good. US 281, Loop 410 West, US 90 at Couples. Not too bad on the roads on this Thursday morning, guys. Thank you, RJ. And Good. Justin, um, my rose bushes are just so brittle and dry, no matter all that, like all the hand watering I'm doing, we are desperately need the rain. Uh, yeah, I set out in my yard hand watering uh, the other day. And I thought, well, what was, what's the point? What am I doing here? It's really so sad. It is. Uh, but you know what? We've got some great news. Uh, there is a better chance of rain now. We're raising the rain chances on Monday. That's going to be our day. Showers and storms are good, bad as a frontal boundary comes through. And to top it all off, we're going to get some cooler weather. So early next week looks great. Even Sunday night, we have a 40% chance of rain. So that's what we have to look forward to. In the meantime, we do have a front coming through this morning. 
It's not bringing us rain, but what it is doing is drawing in some drier air. So we've got dew points in the 50s behind the front, out ahead of it still 60s and 70s. Dividing line is right over San Antonio right now. So we're starting to see that drier air funnel in as we speak. A little closer look here. Bolverde, Holotus, Rio Medina, all seeing the drier air. And now the airport reporting uh, a dew point drop now down to 57. Pleasanton, though, still has that dew point near 70. So that's the difference. We are going to see some gusty winds with this front, too. Out of the northeast, we could see some gusts. Up around 30 miles per hour in some spots. I think it's probably a short window, 8 a.m. to maybe uh, noontime where we see some of these gustier winds. But it's something to watch because as those dew points drop, we get the gusty winds that poses a fire threat. And as we get into the afternoon, winds will start to calm some, especially as we head into this evening. Well, let's look at that fire threat where you see this darker orange color that represents a very high grass fire danger. And I'd say that's San Antonio up I-35 and then east along I-10 because this is where some of those strongest, the strongest winds will be later today. So just something to watch. Uh, we'll certainly be uh, looking out for anything. We, we just got to be careful out there with things the way they are. It's so dry. 70 right now. Dew point is at 57. Northwesterly winds at 6. Temperatures, because it is drier, have been allowed to fall into the 60s in places like Kerrville and Rock Springs. 62 right now in Fredericksburg, but still 70s here around San Antonio. 73 hello to 73 down at Stinson. Forecast high today, still hot. Yeah, it's drier at least, so that's a difference from yesterday, but we're still going to get 90s on the map. 92 here in town, 93 in Somerset, 94 Divine. You will find some 80s in the Hill Country, so a little bit better there. 88, the forecast eye in Bernie today. Let's look at the future cast. That front pushes along the coast this afternoon. It's along that frontal boundary where we could see some more showers and storms, but I think this stays well southeast of our area. Then as we get into tomorrow, likely just mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, uh, but you will notice some humidity returning over the weekend. So by Saturday, a bit more cloud cover, and then we turn our attention north on Sunday. Showers and storms begin to develop along our next front, and I think we can start to see some of that rain creeping into the hill country as early as Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. But it's Monday where we get a good rain chance here around uh, all of South Texas and that front will also bring in the cooler air gusty winds and Tuesday is looking beautiful at this point. The sky's clear. We could see one to two inches of rain uh, really uh, kind of widespread. Now I can't say that everyone's going to get that amount of rain, but that's kind of the general idea right now and that's Sunday through Tuesday morning. And very quickly we've got to talk about the tropics. We've got tropical storm Carl out there. It looks pretty ragged at this point getting sheared. And it moves south. The frontal boundaries, the fronts coming through, push everything down into Mexico. They'll get some heavy rain there. So the extended forecast, 90 Friday, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday. There's our stretch of hot weather, but it ends Monday. Front comes through. We start off in the 70s, but I think we could end up in the 60s with a good chance of rain clearing on Tuesday. A high of only 73. Wednesday morning, 52. Mm -hmm. 76 on Wednesday. I think our yards are going to be happy after that. I we're going to so. be happy. Yeah, we're going to be happy. <laughs> we're all going to be happy. I love how you like said it. It's so, so sure. It ends. The 90s, they end. But it's, is this like it? Is this it? Well, I'm not going to say that. No. I mean, <laughs> Come on, Justin. We've seen the 90s in December. so Right. That's yeah. it for right now. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. We'll, and we'll take it. We'll approve. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Justin. <laughs> All right, it's 523 and 71 degrees. And coming up next, Ryan Reynolds and Will Farrell take on a Christmas classic, and violinist Lindsey Sterling prepares to fly. Maybe mid October, but Hollywood has Christmas in mind. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. What is all of this? I am your ghost of Christmas present. Like a Christmas carol? <laughs> Do you think I'm going to be all intrigued by what's behind the door? I'm not even a little bit curious. Damn it! The first teaser trailer is out for Spirited, a new take on A Christmas Carol starring Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. The Yuletide comedy hits theaters November 11th and Apple TV Plus November 18th. Halloween ghoul discovers the magic of a different holiday in the video for Snow Waltz, the track of
Lindsay Sterling's new Christmas album, Out Now. For her tour, launching November 17th, Sterling has been practicing aerial work, singing and playing violin while soaring above the stage. Really stepping up my game in the theatric department and, um, you know, my little skinny arms are getting stronger as we speak. Every shepherd has a song. She learns it from the sheep. The sheep learn it from the grass. We're all connected. The documentary Shepherd's Song looks at a couple trying to restore ecosystems by grazing animals. The film encourages audiences to explore how they can help heal themselves by healing the land. Shepherd's Song debuts today on the North Faces YouTube channel. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's 527 and 71 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you about a major fentanyl bust that could have killed half the state of Florida and arrests made in the case so far. And don't you love the smell of burnt hair in the morning? Oh my gosh, that's the worst. Okay, <laughs> we'll get an update on Elon Musk's odd choice of perfume and how many bottles he's actually sold so far. Alex, Alex Jones will have to pay nearly $1 billion to Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting victims' relatives after saying the rampage was a hoax. What Jones is doing now to try to pay for his fine and still keeping controversial on his show. And let's look outside with live cam on this Thursday morning. We're starting at 71 degrees, a little less humidity in the air, but I think we're going to see the 90s later on still. Ugh. And then hopefully we'll be done with that. But Justin will talk to us about that in just a bit. But good morning. It is Thursday, October 13th. So happy to be here with the girl show for the next couple of days. That's right. Well, the girl show for, for us, I mean, Justin, we'll, Justin and we'll RJ will you. allow you guys. Yeah, you're included. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now we love you, Justin. Glad to be here. Uh, yeah, let's talk Palm account real quick, guys. So ragweed has been such a problem over the last couple of weeks. It's finally gone down. Yesterday's numbers, it dropped down to 80. Molds were at 260s, so pollen count looks pretty good right now. And I think with some rain, which is in the forecast early next week, we'll see things improve. Now, mold obviously could uh, jump up. As we look at the humidity tracker, dew points are starting to drop off. We've got a frontal battery coming through as we speak. So dew points are going from 60s and 70s down into the 50s. That's the change that's underway right now. Dew point has dropped into the 50s around New Braunfels, San Antonio, Holotus. You see low 50s there, Comfort, Kerrville, and that is allowing temperatures to drop in the Hill Country this morning. Still fairly warm here. We're still in the low 70s. We may briefly drop into the 60s before we warm up. Now this front does not give us a good cool down. With that drier air, we're still going to see some pretty warm temperatures this afternoon. 86 degrees noon time, and in fact, we make it all the way up to 92 later today. So still hot, yes, uh, but we've got some great changes in the forecast that show up early next week. We've got, again, more on that frontal boundary, which arrives Monday with rain and fall-like weather. In the meantime, let's go over to RJ now. I know we've had a, a couple of issues on the roadways, but how's it looking right now? Yeah, Justin, things looking pretty good. There was a crash that we reported on earlier this morning in the Stone Oak area, but that has been cleared out. That was a rollover crash, but uh, all things looking good in that area. Now we're going to start here with our Transguide traffic cameras, I-37 at Jones Avenue. Things looking pretty good. Of course, traffic picking up just a little bit as people get out on the roads this Thursday morning and taking a look now at our wide map. And again, a lot of green here, so things looking pretty solid there. Nothing of note, but there is something that I am kind of following a little bit closer here. Uh, this is out Loop 410 northbound lanes at Marbach Road. So on the west side, basically where Loop 410 and Highway 90 meet right there. And it's being reported as tire debris. You would think not too big of a deal, but I've noticed on the uh, TxDOT uh, website that things are starting to slow down just a little bit in that area. They're now reporting that there are a couple of lanes there as true as crews try to clear out that scene. So we will continue to follow this again right now. According to our maps, traffic looking smooth in that area. So not too much of an issue. But if you are in that area, just kind of keep caution. All right, one more look at our Transguide traffic cameras. I-10 at Frio. Things looking pretty solid there. Again, people making their way out. And again, guys, I am very glad to be crashing the party this morning. Steph and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Now to Alex Jones, a conspiracy theorist ordered to pay nearly a billion dollars for telling lies about the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, the question now is, will the victims' families ever see that money?
A Connecticut jury has handed Alex Jones a stunning punishment for spreading lies about the Sandy Hook school shooting, finding he should pay nearly $1 billion in damages to the victims' families and an FBI agent who responded to the massacre. Just, yeah! Jones reacted to the verdict on his InfoWars show, pumping his fist into the air, saying the verdict is what he expected. You get a million, you get a hundred million, you get a fifty million. Meanwhile, in the courtroom, sobbing from Robbie Parker, who lost his six-year-old daughter in the shooting. It's not just the families that are on this lawsuit that have been victims of Alex Jones. There are numberless amount of people in this country, even his own listeners, that have fallen victim to Alex Jones. A jury found Jones guilty of defamation for claiming victims' parents were actors, calling the Sandy Hook shooting a hoax and even mocking the grieving parents. <laughs> The families and the FBI agent testified they received violent threats because of Jones's comments. Jones's legal team claimed those comments are protected under the Constitution. Today is a very, very, very dark day for freedom of speech. The nearly billion dollar verdict comes two months after a jury in Texas awarded other Sandy Hook families nearly $50 million. And last year, Jones was found liable in four other defamation cases. He's now filed for bankruptcy, claiming he has everything could be subject to this judgment. He's going to have to portray himself as totally broke. And that's not that easy to do. Jones is expected to appeal the verdict in Connecticut. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, millions of Social Security recipients will soon learn just how high of a boost they'll get in their benefits next year. The increase to be announced today is expected to be the highest one in 40 years. It's been fueled by record high inflation and is meant to help cover the higher cost of food, fuel, and other goods and services. How well it does, that depends on inflation next year. The boost in benefits takes effect in 2023. It will be coupled with a 3% drop in Medicare Part B premiums. That means retirees will get the full impact of the jump in Social Security benefits. In Florida, Department of Law Enforcement says it has seized enough fentanyl to kill half of the state's population in a recent drug bust. That is 48 pounds of it. The historic drug bust also found 45 guns. 350 pounds of methamphetamine, and $150,000 in cash. Investigators say the smuggling operation was being run by Carlos Martinez, who is now in jail on an attempted murder conviction. Martinez is accused of using a cell phone to give the orders to his co-conspirators, 24 of them who were arrested. One key suspect is still on the run. A federal district judge could soon decide whether to temporarily block President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program from going into effect. The Biden administration aims to deliver debt relief of up to $20,000 to millions of borrowers. Applications for loan forgiveness expected to open up this month. Six Republican-led states filed a lawsuit last month challenging the legality of the policy and are asking the court to grant a preliminary injunction. If it does, that could put student loan cancellation on hold until the judge issues a final ruling on the case. The states say the Biden administration does not have the legal authority to grant board student loan forgiveness. Time now, 537 and 71 degrees for now. You may have heard of the pink tax, a phrase used to highlight higher prices for products marketed to women, what a national drugstore chain is trying to do to fix the problem. And Elon Musk has turned his last name into a very smelly reality. We're going to show you how his new burnt hair perfume is doing so far. So it's not a joke? I it's happening? Not. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to answer all of those <laughs> burning questions. All right, 71 degrees at 538 this morning. It's a muggy start, but Justin says changes will happen later this afternoon. He'll tell us when when we come back. And welcome back. It's 541. In your morning consumer headlines, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say about a third of adults in the U.S. used telemedicine last year. Women were significantly more likely than men to use telemedicine. They use all, That use also increased with age. Seniors 65 and older were also the most likely to say they used telemedicine in the past 12 months. It was also more commonly used by those with a higher family income and a higher level of education, as well as people living in more urban areas. And you may have heard of the so-called pink tax. It's not an actual tax, but it's when things cost more for women than for men. Usually it's things like razors, deodorant. to reduce
Use prices on CVS brand feminine products nationwide and pay the sales tax on those. allow it. The price cuts are part of a growing effort to close the gap between the cost of women's and men's personal health items. Okay, are you ready to smell like burnt hair? Well, the eccentric billionaire Elon Musk took to social media to promote his new venture into the fragrance business. Musk is selling a perfume named Burnt Hair on his boring tunneling company website. The site describes the perfume as, quote, the essence of repugnant desire. Hmm. <laughs> Musk is selling that perfume for $100 each, plus tax and shipping. So far, he says he has already sold 20,000 bottles of the perfume, which he says is more than $1 million of burnt hair sold. Why? Why are you buying this? I, I don't understand. People need to stop buying this. Maybe they think it's going to be like, you know, not, not a souvenir, but just... It's like a gag gift. Yeah. But still. <laughs> I don't think I would want to receive that. No! <laughs> No, Even knowing not. what the cost is. Oh, burnt hair, disgusting. All right, 543 and 71 degrees. And coming up next, the San Antonio Humane Society is here with a pet that needs a new home this week. Taking a look outside with the roads right now. Not too much going on out there. RJ Marquez is here and he'll update us in just a bit before you head out for work. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Building an ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts and they each have a specific purpose. The colorful skulls found on many ofrendas are called sugar skulls. These days they may not be made out of sugar, but in the beginning they were. The art of molding granulated sugar and meringue was brought to Mexico by the missionaries. With sugar in abundance, it became a popular art supply in colonial times. So the first sugar skulls were not candy, they were decorative. So why a sugar skull? They symbolize many things, one being the sweetness of life. Originally placed on graves, the rain wind would eventually wash them away. So they're also used to remind us of our mortality. To honor their loved one, people usually write the name of the departed on the sugar school's forehead. It's a sweet thing to do. Well, this little baby girl is just kind of shaking in my arms. Yes, Lucy's here from the Humane Society <laughs> and a couple of little baby girls. Two sweet baby girls. Uh -huh. You have Miss Emma and I have little Ellie and their two sisters two sister kittens that are just waiting to be adopted. They yeah. just became uh, available. And before they are adopted, sometimes we need, okay, don't get don't get anxious because you still have those little needle claws going on there. Yes, hello, Aww. how are you? <laughs> You're looking at me like, what in the world am I looking at oh, right now? If you could just see <laughs> the eyes on this thing, it's like, oh my God, I'm on TV. Um, yeah. Fostering for little kittens. And there you go, look in that camera right there. <laughs> and and uh, any age, any length of time, you provide everything, right? Yes, we help you every step of the way. Um, these babies just came back from foster oh, care, so book, they book, did a great okay, job, okay. and now they're shh, old shh, enough. Shh, so usually yes. they gotta be there. I know, look at her. Go yes, to two sleep. months old until they become available for adoption, and they would probably, you know, we need them for our bottle babies, for mm -hmm. all of our pets that need that extra little care. That way, they feel safe while they become old enough to be adopted. Mm -hmm. And a great way if you have uh, little kids and they're going, I want a puppy, I want a kitty. Um, this is a good way to test out if they can take care of a puppy or a kitty. So, exactly, yeah. yes. Well, if you'd like more information about fostering over there at the San Antonio Humane Society, just head on over to uh, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226. This is something I've been uh, following over the past couple of minutes here. Look like crews have been cleared out a, stalling ve a stalled vehicle. Uh, things looking okay there, though, in that area. It hasn't really blocked off any traffic. 
traffic, but uh, it's been a little bit quiet so far on our roadways otherwise. So taking a look at our wider map here, you could see that uh, things looking pretty good here. A lot of our busier areas up around 1604, things looking pretty smooth. And of course, we talked earlier about that uh, tire debris that was on 410 and 90 that has been cleared out. So crews doing a good job getting things moving along some of these major areas this morning. Wanted to bring your attention to some uh, utility work that is still taking place. So this has been going on for a while now. Started on October 2nd, wrapping up uh, in a couple of days here. So this has been out the Lock Hill Selma Road, Bear County area, alternating lane closures in both directions. So good news here. Things look like things are going to wrap up there as Wurzbach Parkway. Always, always a very busy intersection. All right, back here, Trans Guide cameras here. I-37 at Jones Avenue. Again, crews cleared out a stalled vehicle just a little while ago. So everything looking pretty smooth out there as we head out on your Thursday morning. Guys. Thank you, RJ. Yes, thank you. And I know we need the rain and I'm excited about the rain chances that maybe we'll see next week, but I'm more excited about the cold front and busting out those sweaters. Yeah, that too. Yeah, it's 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 all good. It's all good news. Uh, here's some stats and these these really do kind of blow your mind. I mean, it has been 40 days since we've seen a half an inch or more of rain and you got to go back 50 days since we've seen an inch of rain. Now this is at San Antonio International, but uh, it has been a long time and this is the stat that really jumps off the page. It has been officially now a year since we've had an event in which we picked up two inches of rain at the airport. That is how long it has been. And I think that we have a shot on Monday to perhaps get there. I'm not guaranteeing it because numbers may be a little bit below that, but at least we do have an opportunity. Rain chances, 40% Sunday. They'll be up around 60% on Monday. So Monday is our day to get some rain. We're going to take a closer look at that forecast here in just a second. But first, we got to talk about the now because we've got drier air starting to funnel in on northeasterly winds. 53 to Dew Point in Kerrville, 57 in New Braunfels. And we're looking at the Dew Point map here because this tells the story. Temperatures aren't dropping all that much behind this front. It's the Dew Point numbers continue to tumble as this front makes its way off to the south and uh, southeast. Dew Points are in the 50s now for much of Bear County. And as we look at the Dew Point trend today, Probably holding in the 50s, which puts us in the pleasant category. And then tonight, we'll see the dew points drop off even more. You'll see dew points drop into the 40s and eventually 30s. Uh, so that dry air really starts to move in later today. Uh, live cam, 70 degrees at the airport, 73 cents. And we're not getting reports out of Kelly or Randolph. So it's a little bit. Cooler in the hill country with the drier air there in place, and then you find 70s uh, south and east of town. 73 Hill Otis, 70 right now in Divine. Uh, Futurecast wind gusts. Winds will pick up later this morning. We'll see some gusts close to 30. I think this is probably mid morning through about midday when we see our strongest winds. And this is significant because as that drier air moves in and we get the gusty winds, there is a fire threat today. We showed you that earlier up and down the I 35 corridor something to watch. It is that season again where we start to get some gusty winds with these fronts and we got to be careful because it has been so dry. Showers and storms along the coast today as that front makes it a little bit closer to the Gulf of Mexico. We do not see anything here. That's the case tomorrow too. But as we head into the weekend, humidity starts to increase. We get a little more cloud cover on Saturday and then it's Sunday where we start to watch for our rain chances and they do start to pick up. That occurs late Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening as this front gets a little bit closer. And then during the day on Monday, good chances of rain, showers, a few storms and tumbling temperatures. We'll see uh, temperatures start off in the 70s, perhaps falling into the 60s by the end of the day on Monday. And then on Tuesday we clear out, but we still get some great weather. Rainfall potential, I mentioned there's an opportunity one to two inches on average with this front as it comes through. Now, not everyone's going to see this, uh, see these big numbers, but uh, hopefully there will be a few spots to do and we'll see how San Antonio fares through all of this. 90 uh, Friday, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday. So hot through Sunday and then the changes arrive. 60s potentially by Monday evening, 73 on Tuesday, 76 after a morning low of 52. On Sunday. Are we thinking Sunday evening so, or, yes. or overnight? No, it's probably Sunday evening into Sunday night. Hill Country initially and then moving into the San Antonio area Sunday night, more so though on Monday. Oh, we really need the rain. Yeah. We do. And we'll get to see it. That'll be awesome. Yes. <laughs> Not just overnight. That's Thank right. You.
All right, it is 553 and 71 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, 595, five, Fireball two, Daily four, 4084, four, Fireball zero. Cash five, 69, 11, 25, 31, Texas lotto. 7, 13, 16, 19, 44, 53. The line was long to buy a Powerball last night at the convenience store. I bought a ticket. I need to check to see if I won. 14, 30, 41, 42, 59, Powerball 6, Power Play 5, the jackpot $420 million. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the investigation into the documents seized from former President Trump. The new report saying a worker told the FBI that Trump ordered them moved after he received a subpoena for them. And this morning, an ABC News exclusive with two Americans captured while fighting for Ukraine about what their lives were like behind enemy lines and the torture they endured. That and so much more coming up right here on Good Morning America. Well, have you been tracking the housing market? So KSAT.com has put together a map breaking down average home values by zip code. Just in case you're wondering, the zip code with the highest average home value is 78266. The value is roughly $730,000. You can check out this interactive map. Just head to our website, KSAT.com, right now. That's all for now. 557, 71 degrees coming up. In our next hour of GMSA, those who are retired were hit especially hard with recent inflation and it forced lots of people to rethink where their money is going. We've got some tips that can help you secure your financial future. Taking a look outside with the roads, a transcribed traffic starting to pick up as we approach the six o'clock hour. RJ Marquez, we'll have a check on the roads when we come back. Maybe sees Jay O'Brien in Washington. What to expect coming up? This morning, a man recovering after he was stabbed several times. We'll tell you how it all started. And let's look outside with live cam. We're going to start your day at 71 degrees. We will hit 90, but we have some good news for next week. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, October 13th. Happy to be on the desk with Steph this morning. Happy to have you here. Ladies morning, minus yeah. uh, Justin and RJ, but hey. <laughs> we can include them in on the fun. We, we love you guys too. <laughs> yeah. We hope you had a great week so far. And you know, we are starting like a little less humidity, so we're just kind of slowly inching towards better weather. Yeah, yeah. Justin, so I walked out this morning. Yeah. It was super humid, and you say as we speak that front of dry air is coming in. The humidity is dropping. By the way, it's y'all's world. We're just living in it, all right? We're just here to Says support. a girl dad. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, the humidity is dropping. We're going to see lower humidity levels today. So that's that's the first bit of good news as we look at the weather headlines. Uh, we'll see those dew points drop. Air windy, but still hot today. We're going to watch for a fire danger this afternoon too. Hot weekend, temperatures in the 90s. Humidity returns over the weekend, and then we get a real front. I mean, a real fall front on Monday. That means rainy and cooler conditions. We'll see some falling temperatures. Right now, we're looking at 70 degrees. Dew point is at 55 and falling. Northwesterly winds at about six miles per hour. And we've been showing you the dew point map all morning long because it really tells us where our front is. Dew points in the 50s behind it, out ahead of it, 60s and 70s. It's for the most part made it through Bear County now. So you're starting to feel a little less humidity if you're walking outside right now. Your case had 12 hour forecast as you head out the door this morning. 70 degrees at 8 a.m. We'll be up around 86 or so by noontime. Just because there's a front coming through does not mean it's going to be cooler. In fact, temperatures are going to be right about where they were yesterday, just lower humidity levels. 92 at 5 o'clock northeast Julie winds will start to calm a little bit by the evening hours, somewhere in the 5 to 15 mile per hour range. More on that front on Monday coming up. But we go over to RJ now to get you set for your, what is it, Thursday morning? Thursday morning commute. Yes, it Thursday. Uh Friday Eve, as I like to call it, but uh, yeah, Thursday here and things looking pretty good as we take you out to our trans guide traffic cameras, IUS 90 right there at Couples. Things looking pretty good. 281 at Bassey Road, a little bit of a p increase here in traffic as people make their way outside. 37 at Southeast Military, all smooth sailing so far. Uh, taking a bird's eye view of the city right now and uh, again, not looking too bad. We do expect traffic here to pick up in just a little bit. There was a 
stalled vehicle that I wanted to kind of bring up just because this is obviously a very busy area. This is in the near northwest side. This is Loop 410 eastbound at Jackson Keller Road. So I just looked at the transit guide traffic camera and there was a couple of lanes blocked off to the side there, but things have cleared out in that area. Again, TxDOT crews working pretty fast this morning to make sure that things are moving smoothly along the area. Back out to trans guide. This is something that continue to follow right there. That was at 37 Jones Avenue. I'll try and get some more information, see exactly what is going on there. But for the most part, Lou 410, Fredericksburg, things looking pretty solid as you make your way out. Yes, on a Thursday morning. Steph and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, one man is in the hospital after an argument at a bar parking lot turned violent. This happened around 2.30 on Nogalitos, not far from South Flores. That's where police say a 41-year-old man was stabbed several times in the back. He was taken to the hospital. His condition at this time is still unclear. Police are looking for the suspects. And in just a few weeks, voters will decide who will take the lead for Bear County. After more than 20 years in office, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf will step down and he's open to helping his successor. I believe when you serve in office and you leave office, you just get out of the way and don't be a hindrance to whoever takes, their, takes your place. Uh, if they call for advice, I'll certainly respond to it, but I'm not going to be there trying to second guess them. I think we're going to be in good hands. And that interview was ahead of his final state of the county address, which he delivered to the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. During his message, he pointed out five things he hopes Bear County will continue to work on. Now that includes a focus on higher education, public and mental health, a diverse tech ecosystem, more projects that blend nature with urban life, like the San Pedro Creek Project, and more sports and recreational opportunities. There has been talk about a new baseball stadium, but right now it's unclear whether San Antonio will get a new facility or just renovate the current one. Two candidates are competing to fill the county judge seat. Trish DeBerry and Peter Sakai will go head to head in the November election. Early voting starts October 24th. Election day is November 8th. There are also several other races on the ballot to consider. You can check it all out right now. KSAT.com. Well, the House Select Committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol is preparing for what will likely be their final public hearing this afternoon. The panel of lawmakers is promising to show new evidence and new video from January 6th, along with testimony from new witnesses. ABC's Jay O'Brien is in Washington with what to expect. Good morning. Aides to the committee say the panel of lawmakers will focus today on former President Trump's state of mind leading up to and surrounding January 6th. The House Select Committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol, now preparing for what will likely be its final public hearing today. Committee members and significant witness testimony using evidence gathered over the last few weeks to fill in previously unknown details. No live witnesses are planned, but since the committee's last hearing in July, several members of former President Donald Trump's cabinet have sat for taped interviews, along with Ginny Thomas, the conservative activist and wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. She told the committee she still believes the election was stolen, but said she had nothing to do with the violence on January 6th. In its previous hearings, the committee making the case the Capitol attack was a direct result of Trump's false claims the election was stolen and showing evidence of attempts to overturn the vote count in several states. He's become detached from reality if he really believes this stuff. Trump has called the committee's investigation rigged. Meanwhile, the Justice Department is conducting its own separate criminal investigation into January 6th. So far, more than 800 people have been arrested for a variety of crimes, including assaulting Capitol Police officers. Around half have pled guilty or been convicted at trial. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And some other top stories. North Korea says leader Kim Jong-un has supervised tests of long-range cruise missiles, which he described as a successful demonstration of his military's expanding nuclear strike capabilities. The tests on Wednesday extended a record number of weapons demonstrations this year by North Korea. South Korean officials say Kim may also conduct a nuclear test in the coming weeks or months. It's part of an escalating pressure campaign aimed at forcing the U.S. to accept the idea of the North as a nuclear power.
The Department of Homeland Security has confirmed it will roll out a new program geared toward Venezuelan migrants seeking to come to the U.S. It's similar to the approach the administration took toward Ukrainians earlier this year. They must apply, have a sponsor in the U.S., and undergo screening and vetting. There are also vaccination requirements. According to DHS, up to 24,000 Venezuelans will be accepted. Those who cross the border unlawfully will be returned to Mexico. DHS says in August, more than 55,000 migrants encountered at the border were from Venezuela, Cuba, or Nicaragua. That's a 175% increase from last August. Jurors have ordered Alex Jones to pay nearly $1 billion to Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting victims, relatives, and an FBI agent. The verdict is the second big judgment against the InfoWars host for spreading the myth that the deadliest school shooting in U.S. history never happened. He had also said that the grieving families seen in news coverage were actors hired as part of a plot to take away people's guns. Well, back in August, a jury here in Texas awarded nearly $50 million to the parents of another slain child. Well, consumers are still buying Pepsi, Doritos, and Quaker oatmeal, even though PepsiCo has raised prices about 17% from last year. The CEO saying amid soaring inflation, their products are a kind of affordable luxury. The Purchase, New York-based company, is now raising its sales and profit forecast. Other food and beverage companies are under similar pressure to hike prices to pass off higher costs. Sony and Honda are teaming up to make electric cars. The EV by Sony Honda Mobility goes on sale in 2025. Pre-orders will start that year with U.S. deliveries early in 2026. The cars will be made at a Honda plant in the U.S. One executive says the collaboration blends Honda hardware know-how with Sony software skills. And Microsoft has unveiled three new Surface devices. The Surface Pro 9, a cross between a laptop and tablet, has 19 hours of battery life. The Surface Laptop 5 has a 4K monitor and the Surface Studio 2 Plus desktop can show four different app windows at once. It starts at $4,300. Finally, some big announcements from Microsoft. The company says the Apple Music and Apple TV apps will be available on Windows PCs next year. Also, Microsoft is bringing support for iCloud Photos to the Windows 11 Photos app. All right, it's 610 and 71 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, more than half a dozen Americans are believed to have been killed since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began. We're going to hear from the family of a U.S. military veteran who had been fighting alongside Ukrainians. Taking a look outside with live cam, Justin said changes are happening as we speak with a front coming in, bringing drier air. But what does that mean for later today? And can we see cooler temperatures later in the week? He'll explain all of this when we come back. We're learning more about two Americans and their fight for survival after being captured by the Russians while fighting in Ukraine. They sat down with ABC News on the same day we learned another American volunteer fighter was killed on the front lines. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, the U.S. State Department confirms another American citizen has been killed fighting in Ukraine. Dane Partridge of Idaho reportedly died in the eastern Donbass region. He had a spiritual conviction that he couldn't deny. And so... says the U.S. military veteran had been fighting alongside Ukrainians since April. The only thing that he communicated was that the fighting conditions was more than what he had seen in Iraq. More than a half dozen Americans are believed to have been killed since the Russian invasion began, despite being warned by the U.S. government not to go. ABC's Whit Johnson spoke to two U.S. volunteers who fought with the Ukrainian military. They were captured by the Russians and spent 104 days in captivity. It's not just physical torture. There, there was a lot of uh, mental torture. I mean, we were, um, we were sleep deprived. We were purposefully dehydrated. Um, it, we were put in a lot of stress positions that, honestly, some of those are, are worse than, than the punches. We prayed for death. We just wanted to die. We, we just wanted to end. Meanwhile, more dramatic rescues after days of relentless Russian missile attacks across Ukraine. One family pulled from under the rubble of their home in the southern city of Zaporizhia. This young girl squeezing through a small opening from the basement, followed by her mom and dad. 
U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said yesterday he believes Ukraine's counteroffensive will continue through the winter. Vladimir Putin is meeting today with Turkey's president. The Turkish leader could suggest some potential ideas for peace, but expectations are low. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. 616 and 71 degrees. Looks like there's still problems out there at I-37 in Jones. Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. Yeah, Stephanie and Sarah, I've uh, been following this for a little while here. We saw this in our earlier hit earlier about I-37 and Jones Avenue, uh, just a little bit near the downtown area. You could see Transguide uh, traffic cameras here and tech stop vehicles taking care of an issue. We're being told that this is a stalled vehicle. And as we get just a closer look here, you could see that it's not causing much of a traffic backup at the moment. But we do know with 35, 37, uh, this is always a very, very busy intersection as people make their way in and out of the downtown area. Again, this report has a stall I-37 southbound at Jones Avenue. So things just kind of keep caution in that area if you are driving through there. All right, taking a, lot, a wider view of our map. And um, again, just kind of regular traffic starting to build up in our areas as people make their way into downtown San Antonio, but nothing too bad for the moment. Uh, there was a couple of stalls, but no, again, nothing in the major highways or nothing causing any major concern with the exception of that incident near uh, downtown San Antonio. So another quick look here, Transguide again, uh, tech stock crews out there taking care of, uh, uh, you know, clearing out those roadways. But as you can see from our cameras, things still moving pretty smooth in that area. This is something that we will continue to follow throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, RJ and Justin, for the kiddos heading out to the bus stop this morning. You say a front's blowing in. Were they going to need their jacket or not really? Not today. It's not a great question. You know, you would think with a front, maybe we yeah. would need a jacket. You don't. You don't. This is the kind of front that just brings in drier air. It is not really ushering in cooler air. And in fact, temperatures will be pretty similar to yesterday. Uh, as you head out the door this morning, uh, upper 60s perhaps we're still in the 70s right now as that dry air funnels in on northerly winds it will be a little bit breezy i'll tell you that and then after school still hot 92 and still uh, northerly winds uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour let's go outside for you and here's the situation 70 dew point at 55 and dropping northwesterly winds at six miles per hour so those winds really haven't picked up yet and it's the dew point map that we've been watching this morning when it comes to detailing where this front is just south and east of town. Now it continues to push in that direction behind it. Dew points in the 50s ahead of it. Dew points in the 60s and 70s. Still humid in Gonzales. Dew point is 69 there. You compare that to New Braunfels where the dew point is 56. And we have a pretty pleasant air mass. And that is starting to move into San Antonio with dew points in the upper 50s here, Pulverde over to Holotus. As far as temperatures go, 70 at the airport. We're finding some 60s in the whole country where the air is a little bit drier in around Bear County. It's been mostly low 70s this morning. 73 Canyon Lake, 73 right now in New Braunfels, which by the way, did see a couple showers yesterday. Good to see at least a little bit of activity on the radar. Wind gusts. Well, today I think uh, they'll pick up, especially mid morning. We could see some gusts up around 20, 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour in some cases. So. Gusty winds combined with that drier air means we have a pretty uh, high fire danger up and down the I-35 corridor. That's in the very high category where you see that darker orange. So north and northeast of San Antonio, we'll watch for that today. It's been so terribly dry, and that threat's going to be there. Showers and storms may also develop closer to the coast as this front runs into more moisture, but nothing here in town. Saturday, Friday, and Saturday, we'll just be looking at partly cloudy skies, a little more humidity. It's Sunday where we start to see some of the bigger changes. Front starts to sink in into Texas. I think the hill country will start to see some showers and storms as early as Sunday evening, but our best chance of rain is on Monday. Showers and storms, 60% chance, along with some cooler air, gusty winds working through the area. And then behind this front, Tuesday, Wednesday, looks great. We'll get some clearing skies and it will finally feel like fall. How much rain can we pick up? At this point, we'll say one to two inches possible. We'll have to find these numbers as we get a little bit closer, but that's kind of the general idea. Uh, looks like we could see some decent rain in spots. Not everybody's going to get that much rain, though. I'll caution you there. Tropical Storm Carl. Right now, winds are at 50 miles per hour, gusting to 65. This thing moves south. We've got those fronts coming through, so it deflects everything south. Some heavy rain possible across parts of Mexico. Our extended forecast, 90 Friday, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday. 40% chance of rain late on Sunday. Then we bump it up to a 60% chance during the day on Monday with tumbling temperatures. We'll see... 
uh, start out in the 70s and maybe end up in the 60s. 73 Tuesday, 76 Wednesday, and some cool morning lows next week, guys. Oh boy, can't wait. I'm gonna break out all of, you know, my fall basics. My boots. <laughs> Here, pumpkin spice. My pumpkin spice. Fall <laughs> bring basics. it back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna a do that. Pumpkin spice too. actually in a hot, extra hot. Yeah. You know? Well, we should enjoy this because, you know, we never know what to expect. You never know. <laughs> next month. <laughs> Time now, 621 and 70 degrees for now. All right, still ahead on GMSA. Huge blow to the Judson Rockets football team. We'll tell you why they had to forfeit their big win in their season opener. Time, it's life's most precious commodity, especially when you have metastatic breast cancer. When your time is threatened, it's hard to invest in your future until now. Kiskali is helping women live longer than ever before when taken with an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant in HR-positive HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer. Kiskali is a pill that's proven to delay disease progression. Kiskali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Your future is ahead of you, so it's time to make the most of it with Kiskali. Because when you invest in yourself, everyone gets the best of you. The Judson Rockets football team will have to forfeit their 44 to nothing victory over East Central last Friday for using an ineligible player. That has been confirmed by the Chief Communications Officer for Judson ISD. In the statement, Judson ISD says it was the Rockets coaching staff that reported the infraction to the University Interscholastic League. That student was ineligible play due to grades. Now, as a result, Justin loses its district opener to East Central, and now their overall record drops to two to four. So Spurs go. The San Antonio Spurs set to begin their regular season next Wednesday, but first they'll wrap up the preseason tonight at home against the Oklahoma City Thunder. That tips off tonight at 7 p.m. at the AT&T Center. Yes, go Spurs go. We went to the game on Sunday and we were sad oh. what, what happened against the Pelicans. <laughs> so we're wishing for Just better things. Up. That's right. That's right. We we're believe in up. the Spurs. Yes, we do. Time now 626 and 70 degrees for now. All right, still ahead on GMSA. An arrest has been made several days after an eviction notice that turned violent. We'll explain. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Building an ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts and they each have a specific purpose. The colorful skulls found on many ofrendas are called sugar skulls. These days they may not be made out of sugar, but in the beginning they were. The art of molding granulated sugar and meringue was brought to Mexico by the missionaries. With sugar in abundance, it became a popular art supply in colonial times. So the first sugar skulls were not candy, they were decorative. So why a sugar skull? They symbolize many things, one being the sweetness of life. Originally placed on graves, the rain and wind would eventually wash them away. So they're also used to remind us of our mortality. To honor their loved one, people usually write the name of the departed on the Sugar School's forehead. It's a sweet thing to do. Six thirty. 70 degrees. Justin Horn says a cold front is blowing in as we speak, but does that really mean we're going to need a jacket? He'll explain in just a bit. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is October 13th, and we hope you've had a wonderful week so far. So happy to be starting the morning with you guys. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Justin, okay, so I teased, well, you need a jacket, but is that, yeah, yeah. No. no. Next week? No next jacket, week. but get it dusted off and get it ready. Okay. For next week. So this cold, cool <laughs> front is kind of like a practice run? It, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, it, it's <laughs> just, all it means for us today is drier air. And it, it, was, it did get a little humid yesterday, so we'll get rid of some of that humidity for you, but it doesn't That's cool good. us down. We're still going to be hot today, and because of that, we've got gusty winds, drier air, that the, there's a fire danger there, and that's something we'll have to watch closely as we get into the afternoon. Then we get a hot weekend, temperatures still in the 90s, humidity returns over the weekend, but it's Monday that we're all looking forward to. 
a real fall cold front, rainy and cooler on Monday. That's what we have to look forward to. 70 right now, dew point is at 55, and that number is falling on northwesterly winds at about six miles per hour. It's the uh, dew point map that really kind of tells the story here. So the very humid air is getting pushed south slowly but surely as this front comes through. And then we've got dew points in the 50s, which puts us in the pleasant category. It feels a little bit better than yesterday, thanks uh, to this front. And again, we will get some breezier winds as we get around mid-morning. I'd say 9, 10 o'clock, you'll notice some gusty winds. Noontime 86. And by later today, yeah, it's still hot. 92, the high temperature here in San Antonio. We're going to time out that next front for you. We'll talk about rain and that potential on Monday coming up in just a few minutes. But the morning commute starting to pick up some. RJ, what's the latest? Yeah, definitely starting to pick up as people make their way out to school and work on this Thursday morning. Want to start out here with our Transguide traffic shot here. A little bit west of downtown. This is I-35 at Martin. You could see that tech stop vehicles are working on this stall that we have, but uh, you know, not causing much of a traffic backup at this time. Obviously, if you see things out there in the roadways, make sure to kind of take caution as we look at a bit of our traffic flow here. Again, the northbound lanes of I-35 at Martin, this is where this stall is being reported, but for the most part, traffic looking pretty good. We've got a lot of green going on there, but as people make their way into downtown, that may pick up uh, or maybe slow down here in just a little bit. Taking a look at the wider view of our maps and a lot of green on our screen here as well. Kind of a common traffic area there as we look near uh, 410 and 90 Castroville, the far west side of San Antonio as traffic starts to pick up a little bit. See if there's anything going on there. I will continue to follow that as we make our way through the morning. But again, kind of the biggest issue right now, stalled vehicle, I-35 northbound lanes at Martin. Not looking too bad, guys. Thank you, RJ. Closing time at a Southside bar had San Antonio police opening an investigation. They are looking for the person who stabbed a man overnight. Our Katrina Weber live in the 900 block of Nogalitos Road with that story. Now, Katrina, do police know what led to this? Well, they told us that there was a fight here in the parking lot at the Splash Bar and Grill, and it ended after one person pulled out a knife. That person already was gone when officers arrived after 2 o'clock this morning. The victim, a man in his 40s, was still here, bleeding from stab wounds in his back. Police say he was stabbed several times in his back, apparently, again, during a fight, but they did not discuss the reason for the fight. Police also did not specifically say that the people involved had been inside the bar. However, the fight did happen in the parking lot shortly after closing time. Although they believe one person did the stabbing, police say there may have been more than one person involved and witnesses say that they may have taken off in a white SUV. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We have an update now to a story we first brought you here on GMSA. An arrest has been made after an eviction turned violent. This is 29-year-old Cody Sweetman, and according to an arrest affidavit, he became angry after he was asked to move out of the home he shared with his girlfriend's family. The incident happened last Wednesday at an east side home on Fuente Alley near South Walters. The report says Sweetman tied up a 17-year-old boy with duct tape and shot at his girlfriend's mother hitting her in the stomach and thumb. Sweetman was later arrested and is facing an aggravated assault charge. His bond is set at $95,000. This morning, fire at San Antonio police officer James Brennan is out on bond after he was charged with shooting a 17-year-old in a McDonald's parking lot. Brennan faces two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant, so now some are asking why not attempted murder charges. So a law professor with St. Mary's University says he thinks it's because of two main reasons. First, because the punishment is actually higher. Aggravated assault by a public servant is upgraded to a first degree felony, which is punishable by five to 99 years or life. Reason number two, it's easier to convict because they don't have to prove Brennan had intent to kill. The government's gonna have to prove that the defendant acted intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly. So they can prove that his action was not done intentionally, but that it was done even recklessly. 
The law professor also tells us the current charges are preliminary, so charges could be added or changed, but that will be up to the district attorney. The DA's office still hasn't gotten the case because it is still an open investigation. The police chief doesn't have a timeline for when it will be finished. This morning, District 19 Senator Roland Gutierrez is reacting to a New York Times visual investigation that claims there are three major problems in the Department of Public Safety's Robb Elementary investigation. The New York Times is highlighting the discrepancies during the initial active shooter response. That is when agents declared the shooter as a barricaded subject and the moments before the shooter was killed. So now State Senator Gutierrez is calling for the Department of Public Safety Director Steve McCraw's resignation. You know, Steve McCraw has given us different scenarios, both to the Texas Senate and the Rob Committee report and to the press. All of that misinformation has been intentional. I don't know why, but it has been intentional. And KSET has contacted the governor's office and the Department of Public Safety. And so far, we have not heard back. Well, now to Alex Jones, a conspiracy theorist, ordered to pay nearly a billion dollars for telling lies about the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. The question now is, will the victims' families ever see that money? ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. A Connecticut jury has handed Alex Jones a stunning punishment for spreading lies about the Sandy Hook school shooting, finding he should pay nearly $1 billion in damages to the victims' families and an FBI agent who responded to the massacre. Oh, yeah! Jones reacted to the verdict on his Infowars show, pumping his fist into the air, saying the verdict is what he expected. You get a million, you get a hundred million, you get a fifty million. Meanwhile, in the courtroom, sobbing from Robbie Parker, who lost his six-year-old daughter in the shooting. It's not just the families that are on this lawsuit that have been victims of Alex Jones. There are numberless amount of people in this country, even his own listeners, that have fallen victim to Alex Jones. A jury found Jones guilty of defamation for claiming victims' parents were actors, calling the Sandy Hook shooting a hoax and even mocking the grieving parents. <laughs> The families and the FBI agent testified they received violent threats because of Jones. Protected under the Constitution. Today is a very, very, very dark day for freedom of speech. The nearly billion dollar verdict comes two months after a jury in Texas awarded other Sandy Hook families nearly $50 million. And last year, Jones was found liable in four other defamation. A wealthy person like Alex Jones has. Everything could be subject to this judgment. He's going to have to portray himself as totally broke. And that's not that easy to do. Jones is expected to appeal the verdict in Connecticut. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News. New York. Former President Trump's social media app Truth Social is now available from the Google Play Store. The app had been kept off the popular search engine because it violated several Google standard policies. However, Google now says Truth Social has improved its monitoring of content. Well, September inflation numbers not expected to bring much cheer. Lower gas prices could help, but core inflation without food and energy will probably return to a 40 year high. The government report provides the final figures before the midterm elections, and it isn't likely to change the Fed's aggressive interest rate hikes as it combats rising prices. And are you looking for work? A reminder that Bass Pro Shop is looking for some help over the holidays, and they are holding a hiring event to fill full-time, part-time, and seasonal positions. It is happening at the Bass Pro Shop store in the Rim Shopping Center. That's off of I-10, and that's happening today from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And here's a new opportunity to switch careers in as little as six months. One fashion design student is now working to become an animal care officer. San Antonio has the only training academy in the country to offset the worker shortage. ACS has also introduced an animal apprenticeship program. So 20-year-old Trinity Guevara is an animal care services trainee. Academy cadet. Now she's undergoing a 12-week course to learn the ins and outs of handling animals. It allows people with no experience to get hired on as an apprentice, do six months learning the animal handling and things like that, then promoting to cadet. It's something that I actually feel lucky to have attended. I learned so much about animals. And Corporal Jason McAllister started working for ACS a year ago. New hires can get paid anywhere from forty-four dollars to $55,000 a year. The next academy starts in November.
Happening right now, San Antonio Pets Alive is overflowing with dogs and puppies at risk of being euthanized. That's why the nonprofit is offering free adoptions. I said free adoptions. From now through October 16th, all adoption fees will be waived. You can read more about, S about SAPA and its adoption locations. Just head over to ksat.com. And the time now is 641 and we're at 70 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, how you can help secure your finances in a very insecure financial world. Well, new data shows Americans are spending more than $300 more every month due to inflation. And for those who are retired, that extra cost could be stretching an already tight retirement income. As RJ Marquez reports, there are things to do now that could help help you keep your money last. Two. You've worked your whole life to enjoy the rest of your life, and now sky-high inflation and a moody market is putting your golden years at risk. It's hit that generation uh, very deeply because that generation is very conscious and they're living on fixed income predominantly. Forbes reports that a person with a million dollars saved for retirement and expects to spend 50000 a year with 3% inflation and a 3% return, that million dollars would last for 20 years. If inflation hits 12%, that one million would run out in less than 12 years. So what are people doing? They're compromising and then they're shifting healthy lifestyles for maybe not so healthy lifestyles. Experts say it's better to look at the bigger picture. First, do an in-depth budget analysis. Know how much comes in and the net difference. Put any extra income in an emergency fund and pull from this first before dipping into retirement funds. Also, check your portfolio and move money from high-risk accounts. Also, experts warn to be frugal when helping family members. Women will have a tendency to help their children, help their grandchildren. What happens to many women is they think about others before they think about themselves and then they compromise their financial future. Bottom line, don't risk it. Your financial future may depend on it. And if you are having difficulty making ends meet, reevaluate your lifestyle costs, reevaluate what's important, and then start scaling back. And the best advice, make sure to check in with your financial advisor regularly to see what is best for you. All right, we're gonna check in with RJ, who just yes. brought us that story. Thank you, RJ. Uh, I see lights now at 35 in Martin. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a backup here as traffic starts to build in the downtown area. Again, a little bit west of downtown here, I-35 at Martin, and you can see that traffic is still moving along pretty smooth, but again, we have a wrecker out there now, and uh, we have a text dot vehicle that's trying to clear out this stalled vehicle. Taking a closer look here at our maps, and you can see that uh, basically where this incident is there was a little bit more of a backup that looks like it's cleared out just a little bit more but again anything near the downtown area always a little bit of trouble there i-10 starting to see it's normal sort of traffic build up as we get closer to seven o'clock this morning but uh, again this is a stalled vehicle i-35 northbound at martin taking a wider look at our maps and no major accidents or crashes to speak of this morning again mostly stalled vehicles out there um, one of our busier areas right there is a u.s US 90 and uh, 1604 as people make their way in from the Castroville area. Uh, Highway 151, a little bit near that SeaWorld area, also traffic building up, but for the most part, things looking pretty smooth as we take you back out to Trans Guide this morning. I-35 northbound Martin, just kind of keep caution. And again, if there's any emergency vehicles, just make sure you move over and give them enough space to do their work. Guys? Good reminder, thank you. And I had to do a double take with this picture. I was like, is that mm -hmm. rain? It sure is. You remember yesterday we, we talked about that 10% chance? Yes. Well, very few people yesterday did get some rain. And we see it here on our KSA Connect. This was uh, around New Braunfels, and they put it in all caps with exclamation marks. I would do the same thing. It has been so long. Uh, that looks beautiful. Hopefully, we'll see more scenes like this as we get into Monday, and it'll be a little more widespread, and we'll be getting pictures from all over South Texas. That's the hope, anyway. Uh, how many days has it been since we've seen a half an inch of rain in one day here in San Antonio? 40 days. you got to go back to September 3rd for that. More than an inch, you got to go back 50 days, August 24th. And how long has it been since we've seen two inches or more in a rain event here in San Antonio at San Antonio International? A full year, officially now. And the last time we saw that was back on October 13th, 2021. Unbelievable. I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to see that much rain on Monday, but we have a, a shot to get some, at least there will be some places around the area that could get close to that number. 
40% chance rain Sunday night, 60% chance on Monday. So that's what we're looking forward to. Let's talk about the now, though, because we've got a frontal battery coming through, or it's through, and uh, it is starting to, to draw in some drier air. 55 the dew point here in town, 70 degrees northwesterly winds at 6 miles per hour. The front came through just uh, after midnight, but now it's really starting to slow down, and it may actually stall with humid air remaining along the coast and most everyone else seeing some of the, the drier air, two points in the 50s. It's not super dry, but it does feel more pleasant, uh, more pleasant than it did yesterday. Uh, most of Bear County now is within that drier air. Temperature 72, hello to 68, Bernie stage, 69 at Bulverde. Winds are also going to pick up a little bit later this morning. This is around 9 o'clock, and we may see some gusts close to 30 out of the northeast. With the gusty winds and the dry air that's in place, that does post, uh, pose a fire risk. Winds will calm, I think, as we head into the afternoon and lighter winds uh, this evening. There is that fire risk. So where you see this kind of dark orange color, that's where it's at its highest, and that's up and down the I-35 corridor, New Braunfels up to Austin. We'll keep an eye on that today. It's a possibility, uh, and of course, it has been so, so dry. Forecast high, 92 here in San Antonio. We'll see some mid-90s down to the south. And you'll find 80s in the Honeo. In next couple days, will be quiet. We'll see a bit more cloud cover as we head into the weekend with some added humidity. And then as we get into Sunday, that's when things start to change. We'll start to see some showers developing across central Texas as early as Sunday evening. But it's Monday as this front moves through that our rain chances do pick up, as we showed you earlier. And uh, by the time we get into Tuesday, things clear out. And we'll see some great fall-like weather. This is going to cool us down quite a bit. As far as rainfall potential, up to maybe one to two inches in some spots. So this is uh, this is good news. That, by the way, is Sunday through Tuesday. 90 Friday, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday. 40% chance of late sun. Uh, 60% chance Monday. Temperatures probably start off in the 70s, end up in the 60s. What? On Monday with this Friday. Yeah. Clearing out Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday look great. We, 70s for highs, morning lows in the 50s. We awesome. Approve. We approve this time, I love Justin. it. Yeah. I really hope we get some good rain with this. I hope so, too. I, not everyone's going to get good numbers, but at least there is a chance there. Pick me. Choose me. <laughs> Pick me. <laughs> Thank, you, Justin. Me Thank you, Justin. <laughs> All right. 651, 71 degrees. Look at that beautiful. You can just see the glimmer of sunrise starting. Yeah, we're going to have a final look at weather and traffic right after break. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Things starting to pick up out in the roads. We start with Trans Guide here, I-10 at Hackberry. Things looking pretty smooth in that area. I-35 and New Braunfels Avenue as well. But there is now a reported crash at Loop 410 eastbound at Cherry Ridge. Uh, this information just coming into us from TxDOT, so we will continue to follow this as we sort of move along through the morning. But again, Loop 410 eastbound at Cherry Ridge just reported a crash in that area, guys. Thank you, RJ. Drier air filtering into the area today. We'll see temperatures still get pretty hot. 92, the forecast high, but we'll have some gusty winds as well. We mentioned a little bit of a fire danger as well. 90 Friday, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday. We're hot through much of the weekend, but rain chances kick in late on Sunday. 40% chance, and it's Monday that we're all watching so very closely. 60% chance rain. Front comes through, cools us down, and we'll see highs in the 70s next week. And we are very sad to say bye to Kevin Heisen. Today is his last day. He's been with us 21 years here at KSET. Kevin's been an honor working with you, and we wish you the best. Happy retirement, Kevin.